So OpenAI are doing something crazy, so let's talk about it. So you first need to understand what computer chips are because you have to understand why OpenAI would want to do this. So let's start with the basics. A computer chip is basically like the brain of any electronic device. Think of it like this. If your phone or laptop was a person, the chip would be the brain that does all of the thinking. Just like how your brain has different parts that do different jobs. One part to help you remember things and another part to help you see, another part that helps you move your hand. Computer chips have different parts too. Some parts store information, some parts do math really fast, and some parts talk to other parts of the computer. Now, here's something really cool. These chips are incredibly tiny and they contain millions or even billions of tinier parts called transistors. Think of these transistors as like tiny light switches that can turn on and off millions of times per second. And when lots of these switches work together in the right pattern, they can do amazing things like recognize your face, translate languages, or even beat humans at chess. Now remember, not all chips are made the same. The chip in your microwave is very different from the chip in your smartphone. And the chips that run programs like ChatGPT these ones are completely different. So now remember why we said AI chips do different jobs? Well, AI programs need chips that are really, really good at one specific thing, and that's doing lots of math problems at the same exact time. Think about it like this. Regular computer chips are like super smart person who can solve one really hard math problem at a time, but AI programs are like having to solve thousands of easy math problems all at once. It's like the difference between one person digging a hole really deep versus having a thousand people digging shallow holes at the same time. And this is why companies started using something called GPUs. These were originally made to create amazing things in video games, but it turns out making video game cards and running AI programs both actually need the same thing. But here's where it gets interesting. Even GPUs aren't perfect for AI. It's kind of like using a race car to deliver pizza. It does work, but it's not exactly what the car was designed for. We need to understand why this actually matters because like I said, when OpenAI's ChatGPT writes a response to your question, it's making millions of tiny decisions about which word should come next. And each of these decisions requires math calculations. Imagine you're writing a sentence and for each word, you had to consider 50,000 possible words and calculate which one fits best and multiply that by every word in a paragraph, that's essentially what AI does, and it does it in seconds. And that's why, you know, they need so many chips. Of course, we can't talk about OpenAI making their own chips without NVIDIA. They are simply the king of AI chips. They make about 80% of all of the chips used for AI training. That's like if one company made 80% of all the cars in the world. And we can already see how their dominance is. I mean, their chips are extraordinarily good at every major task and every company wanting to build AI systems basically has to buy from Nvidia. It's like if there was only one company that made really good ovens, every restaurant would have to buy from them no matter what the price was. And that's making Nvidia more and more powerful year over year. Their chips are super expensive. One AI chip can actually cost more than a brand new car. And companies like OpenAI need thousands of these chips to run their AI systems. Now, there's another problem. Making computer chips is incredibly complicated. It's so hard that only a few companies in the entire world can actually do it well. Most chips are made in just a few factories, mainly in Taiwan and South Korea. And this creates what experts call a bottleneck. Imagine if there was only one bridge across a river and everyone in the city had to use that bridge to get to work. If something happens to that bridge, well, there would be huge problems. And this is the problem that is currently happening with AI chips. Everyone wants them, but there aren't enough factories to make them fast enough. And the factories that do exist are already working at full speed. Now, this brings us to OpenAI situation. OpenAI spends hundreds of millions of dollars every single year buying chips to run ChatGPT and their other systems. But I think maybe the cost is just a bit too high. And that's why OpenAI have started thinking about making their own chips. Think about it. Every time someone uses ChatGPT, it costs OpenAI money. Not a lot per conversation, but when millions of people are using it every day, those costs tend to add up fast. It's like running a free ice cream shop. Every cone doesn't cost much, but giving away millions of cones can get expensive really quickly. By making their own chips, OpenAI could potentially cut these costs significantly. Reason number two is of course the speed problems. Now, remember what we talked about before, but current chips, even the best ones from Nvidia, are not perfect for what OpenAI wants to do. They're general purpose AI chips, but OpenAI has very specific needs. It's like using a Swiss army knife when you know what you really need is a specialized tool designed for exactly what you're doing. If OpenAI can design their own chip, they can make them work perfectly with their specific AI systems. And this would make ChatGPT faster, smarter, and would allow them to be able to handle much more complex tasks. Now, there's also the independence problem. 
Right now, OpenAI depends on NVIDIA for the chips that run their entire business. And that's extraordinarily risky. What if NVIDIA decides to raise prices? What if NVIDIA cannot make enough chips? What if there's a problem with the supply? Imagine your entire business depends on one supplier and that supplier can cut you off at any time. Having your own chip manufacturing is like having your own backup plan. And you might be thinking, well, you know, if it's such a good idea, why doesn't everyone make their own chips? Well, this is a really good question, but most people don't realize just how hard making computer chips are. And I seriously need you to understand it is incredibly hard. Like, let's use this analogy. Imagine you had to build a city where every building, every road and every pipe had to be smaller than a virus. And this city had to be built perfectly with no mistakes because even one tiny error would make the entire city not work. That's basically what a computer chip is like. The parts inside are so small that they're measured in nanometers. And the nanometer is so tiny that if a marble was scaled up to the size of Earth, a nanometer would be the size of an actual marble, which is insane. Now, the manufacturing process is crazy. Making chips requires incredibly expensive machines and ultra clean factories. We're talking about facilities that cost billions of dollars to build. These factories have to be cleaner than hospital operating rooms because even a tiny speck of dust can ruin a chip and this process involves using lasers chemicals and other high-tech methods to literally carve patterns onto silicon wafers it's like trying to carve a detailed sculpture using tools as smaller than what you can see with your eyes now it's crazy only a few companies in the world have mastered this process you've got tsmc in taiwan samsung in south korea and intel in the united states these are the main players building this capability from scratch would take many years and billions of dollars. Now, if making chips is so hard and expensive, how on earth are OpenAI even going to manage to do this? Well, the answer is, is that they probably won't build the factories themselves. Instead, what OpenAI is likely going to do is what's called the fabulous model. And that means they would design the chips, but pay someone else to manufacture them. It's kind of like those fashion companies who design the clothing designs, but you actually pay a factory to make the clothes. So here's how it would work. Well, first, OpenAI would hire chip designers. They probably already started doing this, and they're going to be creating blueprints for chips that work perfectly within their AI systems. Then you have the partnership phase. So this is where they're going to partner with big manufacturers like TSMC to actually build the chips according to their designs. Then we go on to the testing phase. This is where they would test the chips to make sure they work better than what they're currently using. And then we go on to the production phase. If the chips work really well, they would order them in large quantities and gradually replace their current Nvidia chips. And this approach has been successfully used by other companies. Apple is an example. They don't make their own iPhone chips in their own factories, but they design custom chips and have TSMC manufacture them. And Google has done a similar thing with their AI chips called TPUs. The timeline reality. Now, even with this approach, creating custom chips isn't quick. From starting the design to having working chips typically takes three to five years. It's like planning to build a house. Even if you hire the contractors to do the actual building, you still need time to create the blueprints, get permits and coordinate everything. And that means that even if OpenAI started this project today, we wouldn't see their custom chips in action until around 2027 or 2028. So what does this mean for everyone else? Well, OpenAI making their own custom chips wouldn't just affect OpenAI. It's kind of like dropping a large stone in a pond. The ripples are going to be felt everywhere. I mean, first we need to talk about Nvidia. Right now they're making huge profits selling AI chips, but if OpenAI, which is of course one of the biggest customers, suddenly stops buying from them, that's gonna hurt Nvidia's business significantly. But Nvidia isn't sitting still. They're constantly improving their chips and trying to stay ahead. And it would create kind of like an arms race where both companies are trying to make better and better chips. Now, impacts on other companies. If OpenAI succeeds in making chips that are much better or cheaper than Nvidia's, other AI companies would face a dilemma. They might feel pressure to develop their own chips too, and or they might even fall behind OpenAI in the competition. And we're already seeing this happen. Google has their TPUs, Amazon has their Influencia chips, and Facebook is working on custom AI chips, and everyone's trying to have their own secret recipe instead of buying the same ingredients from the store. Now, more companies working on AI chips is actually good for us because it means more innovation. Different companies will try different approaches and some of these might lead to breakthrough improvements. Competition usually leads to better products and lower prices for everyone, better AI services. Now, if OpenAI's custom chips actually do work as planned, ChatGPT and other AI tools are probably going to become much better. They're probably going to respond faster, give more accurate answers, and probably going to be able to do more complex tasks. It's like upgrading from a regular phone to a smartphone. 
same basic function, but much more capable. You're probably going to be seeing AI that can have more longer detailed conversations without forgetting what you talked about earlier. You'll be able to understand and work with images, video and audio much better, more smoother, more complex tasks like planning and style projects or solving multi-step problems. And of course, real-time conversation is going to get a lot better. And remember, lower cost. If OpenAI can reduce the cost by using those custom chips, they might be able to even offer their services at lower prices. This could make advanced AI tools available to more people and small businesses who can't afford expensive AI services today. Think about how the smartphone got cheaper over time as the technology improved and more companies started making them. The same thing could happen with AI services. It could also enable new devices. Custom AI chips optimized for specific tasks might even enable new types of devices that we've never seen before. Maybe AI assistants that can run entirely on your phone without needing an internet connection or smart home devices that are much more intelligent and helpful. Technical risks. Now, designing chips is incredibly complex. Even with the best engineers, there's always the risk that the chips won't work as well as expected expected or that they'll have problems that only show up after they're manufactured. It's like trying to design a new kind of engine for a car. Even if you've got the best engineers, you won't really know if it works until you build it and test it extensively. There's also the financial risks. Developing custom chips requires a huge upfront investment. We are talking hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars. And if these chips don't work out, that's a lot of money down the drain. For a company like OpenAI, you have to remember they're still growing and they still need money for many different things. And this represents a big financial bet. And there's also the timing risks. Technology moves fast, especially in AI. What seems like a good idea today might be outdated by the time the chips are actually ready in three to four years. A lot of things could change between now and then. And of course, there's competition risks. While OpenAI is working on their chips, Nvidia and other companies are not standing still. They might release much better chips that makes OpenAI's custom chips unnecessary. It's like two runners in a race. If you're ahead now, the other person might pass you while you're still running. A new era of computing. But let's zoom out at all of this and let's just see what that actually means. Well, we might witness the new era of computing, the shift to specialized computing. For decades, we've used general purpose computers, machines that can do many different things reasonably well, but as our needs become more hyper-specific and demanding, we're moving towards specialized computers that can do specific things extremely well. It's kind of like the difference between a general practitioner, doctor, and a specialist. The general practitioner knows a lot about many things, but when you have a very specific problem, you go to see a specialist who knows everything about that one thing. And this trend isn't just happening with AI chips. We're seeing specialized chips for cryptocurrency mining, for processing video, for autonomous cars, and for many other specific applications. Now, there are also some geopolitical implications that I really want to talk about because most advanced chips are made in Taiwan and South Korea, which makes any country nervous about depending on, you know, other nations for critical technology. And the US government is investing heavily in bringing, you know, that kind of manufacturing all the way back to America. And if more American companies like OpenAI start designing their own chips, this could help reduce this dependence. So what happens next? Well, I think that, you know, OpenAI is going to continue, you know, pursuing this because it's really important to them. And I do think that it's going to be super interesting to see what happens. And video is going to be releasing new generations of AI chips to stay competitive. And it's quite likely that within the next three to five years, we'll see OpenAI's first custom chips enter production and start testing. And then after that, we'll likely see AI services that are noticeably faster and much more capable. And then the prices for AI services will begin to drop as companies reduce their chip costs. 